Hi, I'm Barb and I'm Alex and we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making cotton candy garnet from Steven Universe as a part of a doll swap hosted by Retro Dolls US. If you're not familiar with the concept of doll swaps, it works like Secret Santa. You make a doll for one person and someone makes a doll for you. It's not necessarily the same person you make the doll for, but in case of this swap, that's what happened. We'll begin with a little bit of an unboxing. At the end of 2018, we've received two packages with swap dolls, and one of them was for Steven Universe Swap. Our partner, Perpetually Concocted, sent us an amazing package. We asked for a doll that will be either Lars or Lion from the show. She sent us a cute little note with a most gorgeous Lars and Lion sticker, some small brushes that will definitely come in handy while doing repaints, lots and lots of rhinestones and small decorations, which at this point you may notice I'm addicted to, a doll stand for her creation, and last but definitely not least, the doll itself. She's the most adorable thing, and it's actually a combination of both Lars and Lion. She is very well made, and Jetta made everything by herself. We love her smirky expression and all the little details, like the hairpin. Thank you, Jetta, for making this doll for us and for all the extra presents. And also thanks to Retro Dolls US owner Shannon and Sarah from Sugar Lump Gift Shop for creating this amazing opportunity for us doll makers to take part in swaps. Now, let's jump into how we made our doll for the swap. From Jetta's preferences of what doll she'd like to receive, we chose to make cotton candy garnet. Garnet is a fusion between sapphire and ruby, and her cotton candy appearance comes from the episode in which they fused for the first time. I start with modifying this Frankenstein body with epoxy body, called Millipad. After mixing equal amounts of both part A and B, I'm adding some more curves to her body, accentuating her hips and chest. I'm adding rough blobs of the putty first, and pat it down with my fingers to create the rough shape of what I have in mind. I'm wearing gloves, because like any epoxy paste, it's very sticky and can irritate your skin. Next, I grab a brush and some alcohol to dip it in, and smooth out as much as I can, alternating between the brush and my fingers. After the paste is cured, I give it a good sanding, going through a few grids of sandpaper. I'm recoloring the body using the chalk pastel method. It takes some time and patience, but the results are worth it. The parts that didn't get the pastel treatment are going to be painted with acrylic paints to match the character's design. The same process of pastel recoloring applies to the head of the doll. And in this case, we decided to use Abby's mold for that defined jaw and voluminous lips. I spray and apply pastel several times before I get the coverage I need. I'm going to be using two colors, Flamingo for the pink part and Dewdrop for the blue one, both purchased from Retro Dolls UK. First, using acrylic paints, I block out the areas for each of the colors, so I know where to plug with each one. After that's dry, I use my reroute tool and poke the hair in. You know how it works. Garnet's reroute was the first rerouting process I didn't hate. I pour heat resistant glue through the neck hole and let it dry overnight. I did a quick boil wash to make the hair lay flatter and start curling. Because I wanted to get an afro look, I'm going to be twisting the hair onto itself in small buns and secure them with rubber bands. In my two bowls, I have hot and cold water to set the curls. I'm dipping the head in hot water first and follow up with a cold bath to set the curls better. I let that dry overnight. I snip at the rubber bands and take them off, which you can't really tell just by looking, because the curls held up that well. I'm going to unfold and separate them a little bit and cut off the straight ends. 
I was surprised as to how good this hairstyle turned out. To start the face up, I'm doing a rough sketch with a brown pencil to put things into its place. Gareth has three eyes, so I'm adding an extra one on her forehead. After that initial placement, I'm going in with colors, drawing the whites and starting to bring in some black to define the lines. As usual, I'm going back and forth with pencils, pastels, eventually moving on to acrylic paints to make the color pop even more and to add details like shadows, lashes, that bling in her eyes, I like to play with Perlex powders too, so I added some highlights on her cheekbones. Garnet's dress took some figuring out and piecing together elements from a couple of different patterns. After I cut my pieces, I use Fray Check on all the edges. I usually like to hem all of my raw edges, but in this case I left some of them unfinished because of their bizarre shapes, so that extra Fray Check protection was necessary. I wanted this garment to be very clean and color blocked, so I opted out for a glued hem, not to have any stitches visible on the sleeve cuff. The process of making this dress is pretty hectic and some of the footage got somehow lost, so enjoy this montage of some random scenes that don't really explain what I'm doing. However, if you'd like to get a written pattern for this dress, let us know! For some additional details, I'm painting some shapes that would have been too tiny for Barb to sew onto the dress. I'm also gluing these iridescent little stars to the skirt. You can't really see them, but they are there, trust me. Lastly, I repaint this shoe with some acrylic paints and garnet is done. This is how she turned out! We enjoyed making this doll as much as getting to send it to Jetta and receive a doll creation from her. We look forward to taking part in some more swaps in the future as well. What's your favorite fusion from Steven Universe? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time.